Hey guys, how's it going? This is Waj, and in this video, I'm really excited to show off my three-way comparison between the iPad Air, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3, and the Windows Surface 2 from Windows. Now, here are what I think are the three major tablet sectors that you'll be looking at if you're interested in really any tablet. We have Apple, Windows, and Google represented in this video. So we're really gonna be testing out obviously the hardware and the software of all three of these tablets and see kind of how they compare against each other in terms of usability and overall performance and see if really either of these tablets are worth it for you. Now obviously before we begin comparing these three tablets, it's important to note that everyone has obviously their own preferences and what they like to use in any electronic product or component. And this is no exception each of these tablets are designed for a specific person for a specific need perhaps and it's really up to you to try them out yourself and to actually physically experience them yourself to make any kind of conclusion this is really a video that's going to demonstrate some of the technical aspects of each of the tablets in terms of raw performance and usability and everything is really coming from my experience so hopefully I give you a good representation of how these tablets compare against each other so you have a good idea going forward in your own research to see which one best fits your needs. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the overall physical design and dimensions of all three tablets. So the iPad Air in terms of physical dimensions measures about 240 millimeters in terms of its height, 169.5 millimeters in terms of its width. Now as you can see the Surface 2 is a little bit taller measuring about 275 millimeters in its height, 173 millimeters in its width, and the Tab 3 just comes right in the middle being 243 millimeters in its height and 176.1 millimeters in its width. Now in terms of thickness the iPad Air just wins it slightly being about 7.5 millimeters in thickness. The Tab 3 is just close behind measuring about 7.95 in terms of thickness and the Surface 2 is fairly thin but thicker than both of those being about 8.9 millimeters. Now when we take a look at the weight category the Apple trend continues being thinner and lighter than all three devices being about 469 grams for the Wi-Fi edition and the Samsung Tab 3 being about 510 grams and the Surface 2 being quite heavy at 676 grams. Now in terms of the overall design itself in terms of proportions you can see that the iPad is really designed to be a portrait use tablet. It is obviously compatible when uh, using in landscape mode but it's definitely great for looking Looking at websites, viewing articles, reading books and things like that. Obviously you can do all those things tremendously great on the other two tablets but they're more 16 by 9 aspect ratio so that makes them really perfect for watching high definition content in that 16 by 9 format. Obviously you can use them in portrait mode and they're fantastic in portrait mode but in either case the choice will be up to you in terms of which shape you like better. A lot of people who consume a lot of media in the video format will probably appreciate the more 16 by 9 aspect ratios of the Samsung Tab 3 and the Surface 2 versus people who want a more square display to better represent different web pages and uh, different applications that they might use. So therefore again the shape of the tablets will be really governed by what you find more preferable. One distinct design difference on the Surface 2 is that it does have that kickstand that was first introduced in the first Surface computer from Microsoft, which is certainly convenient that it's directly built into the tablet and integrated in a really slick way. Uh, obviously, you can do the same kind of functionality if you get a case on either the iPad Air or the Tab 3. Now, in terms of the external ports and buttons you'll find on all three tablets, they share some commonalities. They all have a power standby button, a volume rocker button, followed by a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now in terms of the ports themselves, you'll notice that the iPad Air has the least amount of ports available on these tablets. It basically has one connection and that's the lightning connection for your charging and data transferring needs. Now the lightning connector is pretty awesome. You can use it in any orientation. It's very small, durable, and fairly high quality. Now another cool thing that Apple has added is the dual microphone setup at the top of the iPad Air which is definitely going to give you better overall sound quality pickup because 
it's actually going to focus directly on your voice a little bit more clearly and it's going to try to suppress any background noise that's irrelevant so therefore you're going to get clear more crisper uh, voice recordings or just getting better audio when you're recording video as well as Siri is going to be able to recognize you a little bit clearer as well. Now, when we take a look at the 10.1 inch Samsung Galaxy Tab 3, you'll notice that it basically has one other connection from the iPad Air, and that's a micro SD expansion slot, which is pretty awesome because you can use that to expand the internal memory up to 64 gigs. And it uses a micro USB connection for your data transferring and charging needs, which is certainly not as good as Lightning because you do have to have it in a certain orientation. And in my experience is not as durable. Now the Windows Surface 2 certainly is the winner in terms of ports and overall variety. It first of all has a full USB 3.0 that is super speed USB capable of 5 gigabits per second data transferring speed which is absolutely great. It also has a micro SD expansion slots to upgrade your memory up to 64 gigs. Now another thing I like about the Surface 2 is that it actually has a magnetic power connection as well as a magnetic dock connector at the bottom of the device. Now using magnets on a power connector is certainly not new. Apple has been doing that for years on their MagSafe connector for their notebook computers, but this is a great implementation and fairly unique in the tablet market. And lastly, the Surface 2 actually has a HD video port connector so you can hook up your Surface 2 to an external display or monitor, making this probably the most closest thing to a fully fledged computer based on some of the ports the Surface 2 has. Now in terms of sound, you'll notice that all three produce some pretty decent sound for being so compact. The iPad is probably the weakest in terms of overall sound projection and quality. I think the iPad uh, is uh, really suffering because it does not have any stereo speakers, so therefore it cannot project as loud as the Surface 2 can or even the Tab 3, which both have stereo speakers with Dolby certification. So they're both a little bit better than what you'll find on the iPad Air. Now we're going to move on to one of the most important aspects of all these tablets and that's the screen itself. They're all capacitive touch screens but they kind of come in different flavors and slightly different sizes. So in terms of screen size themselves you'll notice that the iPad is the smallest measuring about 9.7 inches versus the Surface 2 measures about 10.6 inches and the Tab 3 measures about 10.1 inches. Now when we take a look at the screen resolution you'll notice a pretty big difference here. Now now the Retina display on the iPad Air certainly has the biggest advantage in terms of sheer resolution and overall clarity. It has a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and with a PPI count of 264. And when you take a look at the Surface 2 which is 1920 by 1080 which is certainly fairly good, it's nowhere near the iPad Air. And the worst of all three tablets is definitely the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 which has a 12 1280 by 800 resolution with a PPI count of 149. So certainly the worst and the iPad is certainly the big, big winner in terms of resolution. Now in real life, when you look at these screens in person, you'll notice there are some overall differences in terms of how they render color and how they process information on the screen. You'll notice that the iPad is very, very vibrant, extremely crisp in terms of text and overall color vibrancy and color contrast, the Surface 2 is definitely up there in terms of that and so is the Samsung Tab 3, but in terms of clarity, you definitely notice that difference on the iPad Air. Now that's not saying that the Surface 2 or even the Tab 3 are bad screens. They're very competent screens and obviously I would prefer the Surface 2 screen over the Tab 3, but it's primarily why you have the lower end price tag on the Samsung Tab 3, which costs almost $100 less than the iPad Air and $50 less than the Surface 2. Now when we take a look at the internal specifications of all three devices, you'll notice some 
minor differences and overall similarities. Now in terms of the CPU in all three devices, you'll notice that the iPad Air has the new Apple A7 chip, which is a dual core processor clocked in about 1.3 gigahertz, which is an excellent dual core processor. It's actually faster than some of the lower end quad core processors that you find on other devices. Another cool thing like the iPhone 5S, the iPad Air has a co-processor, the M7 co-processor, which really takes a load off the main chip to kind of focus more on gyroscope, accelerometer, and compass calculations. Now, when we take a look at the Surface 2, you'll notice that it has a quad-core Tegra 4 processor clocked at about 1.7 gigahertz, and uh, the Tab 3 actually has an Intel Atom processor, which is clocked at about 1.6 gigahertz, and that's a dual-core processor. Now, in terms of system memory, both the iPad Air and the Tab 3 have one gigabyte of RAM, and the Surface 2 actually has twice the amount of RAM, having two gigabytes of RAM. And to test out the performance of the internal hardware and specifications, we're going to take a look at a benchmark that is cross-platform to all three devices. We're going to take a look at, we're going to go ahead and run 3D Mark, which is a benchmarking tool that'll take care of our CPU, GPU, and RAM benchmarking needs all in one. So it's going to run a pretty high quality, intensive uh, gaming scene, and we should have a good idea in terms of how they all perform against each other. Now, interestingly enough, when we take a look at the results of the 3D Mark benchmark, you'll notice that the iPad Air actually wins it by just a couple of points. It's getting 10,537. The Surface 2 came in second place by having 9,588. And at last place, the Samsung Tab 3 just got completely destroyed at 3,582. Now, if we break down the scores of the Surface 2 and the iPad Air, you'll notice on the graphics score, the iPad Air wins the graphic test. In both cases, it's getting higher frames per second on average than the Surface 2. But on the contrary, if you take a look at the physics score, you'll notice that the Surface 2 is actually beating it by quite a bit. It's getting about 11,716 versus 8,494 on the iPad Air. Now, obviously, as we mentioned, when combining the scores, the iPad wins overall, which is really interesting because it actually has a dual core processor clocked in pretty low compared to the quad core Tegra 4 that's in the Surface 2. So looks can be deceiving and uh, this is definitely a big surprise. It's kind of like what we saw in the 5S just very recently where the dual core A7 chip is super super fast especially for a dual core processor. Now, in terms of general use, opening up different applications, doing multitasking stuff, um, just generally browsing the web, I think all three devices are pretty fast for whatever operating system they're running at. Windows RT is a little bit more CPU and memory intensive. That's why it requires a little bit more horsepower to kind of get up and going. And once you have it, the Windows RT experience is fantastic on the hardware that's on the Surface 2. Uh, in the same vein that the hardware inside the iPad Air is amazing to run iOS 7. It's absolutely fantastic, really, really quick. In fact, I would even say that in some circumstances, the iPad experience is a little bit faster by just fractions of a second compared to the Android experience on the Tab 3 and the Surface RT experience on the Surface 2. And really, that's mostly because the hardware and software are fully unisync. They're completely in harmony with each other. Apple has designed this closed garden to be as efficient and as fast as possible and it certainly shows on the iPad Air. Now make no mistake about it, the Samsung Tab 3 is a great tablet that is very snappy, very responsive in every single way that the other two tablets are. It certainly can be more powerful, it could use a faster processor, perhaps even more RAM because Android is a little bit more intensive of a OS than your iOS because you could do so much to it in terms of customization and adding so many different kinds of widgets and things like that. So it can always use a little bit more on the hardware front. But again, the beauty of buying an Android system is that you have so much variety in whatever you like. In fact, this Samsung Tab 3 is not even using a pure version of Android. It actually is running a TouchWiz skin on top of Android, which is not really the pure Android experience. If you want that, then you want to go to a Nexus device or even root this 
Tab 3 if you want it. But the cool thing is if you want to spend a little bit more, because if you need a faster tablet, you can get one. Samsung is coming out with a new Tab 3 with all new hardware, and which is going to be a lot faster than what you find on this current generation. Now, moving on in terms of the internal memory, you'll notice that the different models obviously come in a different memory configurations. The Apple iPad Air actually comes in 1632, 64, and 128 gigabytes available models and of course you can get the Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi and cellular iPads like usual. The Surface 2 and the Tab 3 actually come with less variety in terms of memory models. The Surface 2 comes in 32, 64 gigabyte versions and the Tab 3 comes in 16 and 32 gigabyte versions and uh, obviously you can expand either of those memories up to 64 gigs using the included micro SD expansion slot in both of the tablets. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the cameras that comes in all three of the devices. We'll start with the front facing camera of all three devices. The iPad Air still comes with a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera that can do 720p video at 30 frames per second. The Surface 2 on the other hand bumps up that resolution to 3.5 megapixels and it can do 1080p at 30 frames per second video on the front facing camera. Now the Tab 3 is a 1.3 megapixel camera in terms of still on the front facing side but it can only do standard definition video and if you take a look at the footage that I shot you'll notice that it definitely is not as good as the other two tablets. The clear winner over here is definitely the Surface 2. Having that nice 1080p front facing camera definitely gives you better video quality. Moving forward we're going to take a look at the rear facing cameras of all three devices and we'll start to see some differences in terms of the overall strengths and qualities of the rear facing cameras. We'll start with the iPad Air which has a 5 megapixel stills camera that can do autofocusing and everything like that and has 1080p at 30 frames per second with video stabilization and the Surface 2 actually has another 5 megapixel camera, slight variation in terms of the overall resolution. It also has a autofocus system but it also has an LED flash which the iPad Air does not have and it can do 1080p at 30 frames per second and we take a look at the Tab 3 it has a 3.15 megapixel camera which is certainly a lot lower than the other two and it could also do 720p video at 30 frames per second. So why don't we take a look at the actual video quality of the rear facing cameras and you guys be the judge in terms of what looks best to you. Now the final things that we're going to talk about is the Wi-Fi capabilities and the overall battery life of all three devices. Now in terms of Wi-Fi, pretty much all of them are exactly the same. All three devices are 802.11a, b, g, and n compatible. They all can do dual band certification so they can do 2.4 gigahertz frequencies as well as 5 gigahertz frequencies. Sadly, none of these devices are AC compatible, which is kind of unfortunate. We'd love to see that especially if you have an AC router right now or are planning to upgrade to an AC router in the future and they're all Bluetooth 4.0 certified. Now the cool thing about the iPad Air in terms of Wi-Fi is that it has the multiple input, multiple output certification for its Wi-Fi antennas so it can theoretically get more bandwidth up to 300 megabits per second so you'll definitely find a little bit better in terms of strength and quality on the Wi-Fi usage on the iPad Air and that's certainly what I've found when comparing it to the other two devices. Now when we take a look at the battery life of all three devices, the iPad Air and the Surface 2 get up to 10 hours of multimedia playback. So that's video playback on a constant loop, you get about 10 hours and same goes for web browsing. The Tab 3 actually is very close, it gets up 9 hours, so just an hour shy in terms of multimedia playback and they're all very very similar in terms of battery life, you're not going to find much of a difference and uh, unfortunately all three devices have a non on user replaceable battery, which is fairly typical for tablets these days. But on that guys, I know we talked a lot about in this video, there's a lot of different things that you have to consider when buying really any of these tablets. Obviously speed and performance is gonna fluctuate here and there, but these days if you're looking at a similar price bracket that we are around the uh, 499, 449 and 399 price range, uh, there are some benefits to one tablet over the other. And again, it depends on your specific preferences like I mentioned earlier in the video to choose which tablet 
tablet best represents your unique needs and interests. But again, if you have any questions at all about anything I talked about in the video, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. Also, if you like the video, please make sure to give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out. And if you haven't checked out our other comparisons, please make sure to visit our channel Majid Sayyid 2, where you can check out all of our different unique product comparisons, whether it be through cameras or tablets or cell phones. You'll find all that stuff on Majid Sayyid 2 on YouTube. We'll have a link, of course, at the end of this video. Please make sure to subscribe. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.